Hi, and welcome again to this new video about Semantic Kernel, in which I introduce in developing with C Sharp language, and this is probably the most interesting aspect of uh, Semantic Kernel. Now, when we talk about C Sharp support, uh, we uh, surely start telling you that the library is in RC3, and there are a lot of breaking changes respect the beta. I'll try to introduce the new syntax uh, with some uh, practical example. And then semantic kernel as C sharp as first class citizen to develop your application. And this is probably uh, the most characteristic, uh, the most important characteristic of semantic kernel. If you are a .NET developer, if you are a C sharp developer, you can uh, usually use your favorite language and you are ready to go. And you can use a simple process object to invoke Python script. And that is important because it helps you to interact with artificial intelligence with some models like OpenAI Whisper, as we saw in the previous video about using lang uh, using semantic kernel with uh, OpenAI Whisper to extract the transcript from an audio. In this example, we want to use the very same, we want to obtain the very same result with C Sharp. And so we don't have a, a practical way to use the model, the OpenAI Whisper model inside C Sharp. So it is much more um, simply, it's, it's much more simpler to just use Python and invoke a script in Python. This is probably the first thing I'm li I am I like to tell about using semantic kernel in C Sharp, the ability to call Python script just to avoid the problem uh, that uh, you have a lot of code written in Python, you find sample in Python uh, to interact with large language model or other model like OpenAI Whisper, and you fear that if you are developing in C Sharp, you are losing that kind of simplicity. You are losing uh, the simplicity to interact to, with this model with Python. And uh, the solution is simple. I'm just creating a simple Python file that is really, really simple. And it has the um, transcript code that uses OpenAI Whisper. It's very, very simple. Um, it's you, you can find in the source code, and I simply wrap this into a Python library that has, that accept, as you can see, a single parameter in the command line that is the name of the audio file I want the script to work with, and it will simply use the OpenAI Whisper, extract the audio, and print the result in standard output. Nothing complex. You can test super simply with command line or in Visual Studio Code, and you can reuse your Python code as is without any modification. Then I have a Python wrapper whose purpose is helping me to invoke a Python script, passing arguments, and then simply capture the output. So this is the way I can use, I can interact with my Python script from C Sharp code to simply call a script and get the result. Um, as you can see, it's very, very simple. Its only purpose is using a process, start info, to create um, the common line in which I specify the name of the Python interpreter, the Python XE, the, the script file. It works in Windows, it works in Linux or in Mac, it's, it's no problem. And I use the redirect standard output to true, and this allows my c -sharp program to capture all the output of the program. And since the Python script is very simple, it is extracting the transcript with OpenAI Whisper and then simply output to the console all the result, I'm able to capture the output and there is no problem. I'm just calling a uh, process wait for exit because my C-Sharp program, program with halt waiting for the Python script to terminate and then I got the result. Really, really simple. And this is the simple code that is actually using the wrapper to call my Python script. I created a simple function, a simple method that is um, used to verify that everything works. I can uh, launch my program. My program will start and then it will go and call my code. Now, the only important part is choosing the name of the Python XC in Windows or the Python 3 script in, in, uh, in Linux or Mac that will be used to execute the script because in this situation, I need the environment to be able to use OpenAI Whisper. So uh, I need to have the right pip package installed and this is very simple because you can use virtual env. In the readme file of the uh, company project, you will find all the instruction to just create 
uh, the environment, and the environment is called SK kernel, then I have a requirement TXT with all the libraries needed to run my Python script, and then you can just use pip to install every dependencies. So when I'm invoking the Python script from my C Sharp, I'm sure I'm using the Python XC from the directory of the virtual env, so it has all the dependency already installed. Now I can just move in my instruction. So I'm calling directly the extract audio and it extracted the audio with FFmpeg. And then I call my Python wrapper. And when I call execute, as you can see, the program frees because actually it is waiting for the Python script to terminate. And so now we can skip this part and we'll uh, start again when the script terminates. As you can see, we can have also a progress bar. And this is because my software is capturing the output of the Python script. And so the progress bar of OpenAI Whisper got showed in the, in the console, but this is not usually the case, the situation. Usually when you invoke an external Python function, your program will simply wait for the other program to terminate and you have no output until the script output with the final print all the result that it want to pass to your C -sharp program. Then I got the result and I can simply do a console write line to output all the result of my Python script. And okay, as you can see, I indeed have the complete transcript made by OpenAI Whisper. So this concludes this very first brief introduction to semantic kernel in C Sharp, where I wanted to show you how easy it is to call a Python script from C Sharp giving you the assurance that even if you want to use semantic kernel with C-sharp, you always have the ability to call your Python script whenever you need to interact with some model or some part of the Python world where with a few lines of code, you can do a lot of good and simple interaction with language models. So you can maintain the power of C-sharp for orchestrating, for writing your software, but you always have the ability to ask for a Python script execution to perform something that is much more simpler to do in Python. And this concludes this video about a very brief introduction on how you can call a Python script from C Sharp. And in the next video, we will start going much more deeper into how I can interact with a large language model thanks to semantic kernel in C Sharp.